Sands Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 24 from the specimen paper for the Cambridge IGCSE um, 0580 paper 4 extended. This is the specimen paper um, taken from the um, 2024 exam. And this question here is about the straight line y equals 2x plus 1 intersects the curve y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4 at the points a and b. Find the coordinates of a and b, give your answers correct to two decimal places. Okay, so keep this in mind. All right. Now, when we want to find where two lines or a curve and a line or two curves intersect, we have to solve the equations of those two simultaneously. So we have y equals 2x plus 1, and we have y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay, now there's many ways we can, you know, deal with uh, solving these simultaneously, all right? But there's one principle that I want um, everyone to understand, which is very, very important, because sometimes you get questions which are not so straightforward. In this case, most people will say, they'll use the term let's equate the two equations together and then they will continue and in this case that will actually work in terms of one says y equals the other one also says y equals so if y equals this and y equals that then they're equal to each other but i want to um, get you to understand things in a more comprehensive kind of manner so supposing supposing the question was for example x squared plus 2y squared is equal to say 7 supposing that was a question Right, it's possible to get a question like this. In this case, equating the two equations together, if these were the two equations, it's not going to really help us unless we make y the subject and then have a square root and then it becomes complicated. So the, the, the better way of, of thinking about it is substitution. Substitution. Okay, so in the question that we have, what I would do is I would say, okay, let's replace the y in one equation by with what by what y equals in the other. So y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. I can replace this y with that. And then I end up with an equation x squared plus 3x minus 4. So I've replaced the y with what y equals in the other equation. So that's equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, so in this kind of example here, you would just basically replace this y. You take this y and replace it with 2x plus 1. That will take the place of that y. You'll have x squared plus 2 times 2x plus 1 all squared equals 7. You would then have an equation just in x. Okay, now this is not in the equation. Okay, this is not the equation that we have, so I'm not going to really go that way. But just to give you an example of a type of question where it makes it easier for you to think in terms of what I just mentioned. Okay, um, substituting. So we've basically taken this, we've taken this and replaced, we've taken this here, this, and we replace the y with it. Okay, so we replace the y with x squared plus 3x minus 4. This took the place of that y. Substitution. That's, an e that's a more comprehensive way of thinking about it in terms of solving the equations. Now what we can do is we have to solve this equation. When we have a quadratic like this, we can solve these quadratic equations by, um, first of all, making it say equals 0. Okay, so we're going to say x squared now you've got 3x, and you've got to take away 2x from both sides to get rid of the 2x from there. So minus 2x, and you've got negative 4. You've got to take away 1 from both sides, so you have minus 1 on this side. This becomes 0. Subtract 2x, subtract 1 from both sides. Okay, so this gives us x squared. If we simplify this, plus x minus 5 equals 0. Now, this is a very important statement. Now, correct to two decimal places. Give your answers, correct to two decimal places, meaning we have to... Uh, we, we will not be able to factorize this. We will not be able to factorize this. So we have to use either the formula, the quadratic formula, or we use what is based, the formula is based upon, which is actually completing the square. Okay. So if this was a calculator, a non-calculator question, they might say, give your answers in exact form. Okay. Sometimes they'll say in exact, exact form. Sometimes they'll say correct to decimal places. Both of these statements here, are an indication that you will not be able to um, 
you know, use the quadra- you so you'll not be able to factorize. Okay, you'd have to use the formula or complete the square if it says correct to two decimal places or in exact form. In exact form might be more common in the non-calculator paper, okay, where you have to leave everything in third form in the end. Okay, so but that in this question it says correct to two decimal places, right? So we have to in the end round our answers to two decimal places two decimal places. Okay, so that means basically don't bother trying to factorize. You won't be able to. So we can use the quadratic formula. Now the quadratic formula is given in the formula sheet, which is in the second page of this paper. So if we go back to that, and I'll get it. Okay, so this is the formula as given in the formula sheet, which we should know inside out ourselves anyway. Okay, it's not something that you should be, have any doubts about, but it's in the formula sheet anyway. So for the equation ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So a is a coefficient of x. In this case, it's going to be one. B is a coefficient of, sorry, a is a coefficient of x squared. In this case, it's going to be one. B is a coefficient of x, which in this case is also going to be one. And c is going to be equal to the constant, which is negative five. And that's when it says equals zero. So this equation or this quadratic formula this formula here can be used when it's a, when you have ax plus bx plus c equals zero. That's why we made it say equals zero. That's why we subtracted two x and one from both sides. So it says equals zero. So now that's a, b, and c. We can now apply the formula. So x is equal to minus b, which is minus one plus or minus the square root of b squared. So you're going to have one squared minus four times a, which is one times c, which is negative five, all over two times one. Now if you had the non-calculated paper then you would actually you know write down other stuff you can just use your calculator for this but i would suggest in either case you write this in its exact form first so you have one plus 20 which is 21 so one minus one plus or minus root 21 over two so there's two there's two answers here one of the x values is minus one plus root 21 over two and the other value is x equals minus 1 minus root 21 over 2 and then we can write these in their exact in their decimal form okay and then we can round them um, to two decimal places at the end okay we also have here the other value of um well the y values okay so for the y values now we know y is equal to well we can use any of these two equations here we can use y equals 2x plus 1 we can use y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4 to substitute the x values in of course this is much easier to use so let's use this one so you have y equals 2x plus 1 so we know that y equals 2x plus 1 so i'll have 2 times minus 1 plus or minus root 21 over 2 so y is going to be um and that's going to be plus 1 sorry add 1 to that so you're going to have this 2 cancels with this 2 so you're left with minus 1 plus 1 which is 0 so you have y equals plus or minus root 21 you got either y equals root 21 or y equals negative root 21. Okay, so when y is equal to minus 1 plus root 21, okay, you're going to have y equals root 21. Okay, when y equals uh, minus root, when, when x equals minus 1 minus root 21, okay, then y, then when x is equal to this minus 1 minus root 21 over 2, then y is going to be negative. So basically, when when you have x equals this value, you're going to get as your decimal, let's see, minus 1 plus root 21 over 2. Okay, in fact, you know what you should do just to make sure? Just put it in like this to make sure that you've done the right thing when you have your calculator paper, paper for your fraction. Okay, minus 1 plus the square root of 1 squared minus four times one times negative five over two so you have minus one plus root 21 over two which is this answer and then okay, the minus sign is going to be a negative then that's all Oops. so you have minus one minus root 21 the minus in front of the whole fraction here so it's the same as minus one minus root 21 over two same thing okay so when you have these two values, as we said, when it's positive, when this is positive, okay, you're going to have um, your y equals root 21. 
negative, you're going to have y equals negative root 21. So let's put these values now into our calculator to get the decimal value. So we've got minus 1 plus root 2, no, the other, this other one, sorry. So you've got minus 1 plus root 21 over 2, which gives you 1.79128. That's 1.79128. And we have a minus here. That's this one here. So that gives you minus 2.79128. Minus 2.79128. And then you have y equals root 21, which is equal to 4.58257, 4.58257, and this is obviously negative over here. Okay, so our answers in the correct format of two decimal places, okay, are as follows. So for this, you're going to have 1.79 and 4.5. Five, eight. And for this, you're going to have negative 2.79 and negative 4.58. So those are the answers to two decimal places for this um, question number 24. And that concludes this question and this paper from the specimen paper for the new syllabus of 2025. Okay, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear at the top right of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of um, solving quadratic simultaneous equations, you could say, you can find it in the playlist over here. I'll also include this in my, um, in my playlist on graphs, okay? And you can, you can also watch my now, previous material from other from the previous syllabus on uh, you know these type of simultaneous equations in the playlist over there thank you for watching and see you soon